the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. See you. 
A reading from the Torah taken from the book known to us as Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called this place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Hear the wisdom of the Hebrew Scriptures. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is taken from Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people, and incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoran. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great depth. He brought streams out of the cliffs and the waters gushed out like rivers. God of pilgrims, strengthen our faith, we pray. Guide us through the uncertainties of our journey and hold before us the vision of your eternal kingdom made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Christian writings taken from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. 
but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The earliest of the followers of Jesus, and I'm talking here about, you know, those first generation Christians, people who were following Jesus even before the word Christian was in common usage often referring to themselves as followers of the way. These early Christians, we're talking people who did not have any of the written gospels, people who lived in the same time and maybe even met people like Peter and James and John and Andrew and Bartholomew. Those early Christians, very little remains of what they believed and how they worshiped and how they uh, shared their faith with each other and with the world around them. But this little snippet from Paul's letter here, we think may well have been one of the earliest Christian hymns this early Christian hymn to Jesus, talking about Jesus emptying himself and coming to live as one of us. Now these people, they had no churches. They had no creeds. They had no doctrines. They had people who had met Jesus. People who shared stories of their own meetings with Jesus or stories that, of meetings with Jesus that uh, they had heard firsthand. Often they would meet at the end of a workday because Sunday was not a holiday, it was not a day off. They would have worked quite often a full 12 hours and then would have gathered in somebody's home, usually uh, somebody who was maybe a little better off than the rest of the community, so they had a little bit more space. Often they would meet and share food. So yeah, we've been doing potluck suppers for 2,000 years now. And they would probably read Psalms. They would tell these stories. They might hear Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, tell about that encounter with Jesus when he was given back his sight. Or maybe it would be Andrew or James or Peter talking about things that they had experienced in their time sitting at the feet of Jesus and traveling with him throughout Galilee. Maybe it was Cleopas telling the story of how he was heading home to Emmaus and this figure he didn't recognize came and spoke to him as he was in the depths of despair because Jesus, this one that he thought would have been the Messiah, the anointed one, had been killed. And how during that journey, as this unknown one explained the scriptures to them, 
that he and his companion, probably his wife, felt their hearts blaze within them. And in the breaking of the bread, Jesus was revealed to them. And we think they would have sung this hymn. That this would have been one of their foundational understandings of Jesus. That Jesus chose to come and live amongst us. And chose to come and live amongst us, not as somebody with power and authority and wealth and privilege, but taking the form of a slave. Just ordinary folks. That he did this humbly and obediently. And that because Jesus chose to do these things, because Jesus did them in humility and faithfulness, that God recognized that as something of significance and that the name of Jesus, every knee should bend. And I think in there, there's a, a clue as to how we ourselves, as the followers of the way today, need to think about Jesus and what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Because I think it really does mean that we choose to follow Jesus. That we choose to follow Jesus not because of some kind of reward that we're going to get, not because of some fear of some kind of punishment that might be meted out, but rather that we choose willingly to follow because that is the will of God. And so we do that with humility, being obedient, being obedient even when it's difficult, being obedient even when others look at us and don't understand why we would choose to live this way. Why we wouldn't take every advantage we could get. Why we wouldn't accumulate as much as we possibly could. Why we wouldn't choose greed and selfishness and privilege and wealth and power. Because Jesus didn't. And because Jesus didn't, he showed us the way to be in relationship with each other, to be in relationship with God. As Paul says, it is here that we are in a situation where the will of God is in us and works through us. To God be the glory forever and ever. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. prayers of the people. God longs for us to die, to sin and live, but it has to be our choice too. God has called us as we gather in his name. Let us bring to him our prayers which come from our love and concern. Lord, we thank you for all the help and encouragement we are given from the church, from its worship, teachings and fellowship, from its faithfulness in prayer. Bless and all living loving ministry in word and sacrament throughout the world. Church, we inspire us to all want your will and to do it. We pray for Todd, our Bishop, Linda, our Primate, Anne, our Metropolitan, Kristen, our Archdeacon, John, our Regional Dean, Raymond, our Rector, our Wardens, Parish Council, and all Parish Ministries. We pray for our brothers and sisters at Canon Davis Memorial. St. Paul's, Point Edward, St. John the Baptist, Walpole Island, St. Stephen's, Thamesville, Christ Church, Dresden, Church of the Advent, Ridgetown, and for our companion diocese of Amazonia in Brazil. O God, work in us, inspiring both will and deed. Lord, we pray for the world where the misery and tragedy of wrong choices grieves your heart of love. Let there be wisdom and compassion in all negotiations and decisions. Let there be humility and leadership and responsibility for right action shared by all. O oh God, work in us, inspiring both will and deed. Lord, we bring you to you the joys and worries, the frustrations and accomplishments of this week in the lives we have met and shared. Today in our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Virginia Y. Stan and Marg Zagrodny and their families. As we pray, let your light shine into these lives for fresh directing and lasting good. O oh God, work in us, inspiring both will and deed. Lord, we bring to you those we know who are ill or suffering in any way, especially those whom we know that have special need to feel your healing touch in their lives and whose names we speak now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Give them healing, restore them in body, mind, and spirit, and provide them with your indwelling. 
O oh God, work in us, inspiring both will and deed. Lord, we remember in your presence all those who have died, and particularly those we have known and loved. Thank you for them, and thank you for your promise of eternal life and peace. May we comfort one another throughout your love. O oh God, work in us, inspiring both will and deed. Lord, we thank you for your offer of life in all its abundance. May we accept it with joy every day of our life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us praise our Savior, taught us. can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 